Alright everyone, welcome back to the finals of the Local Legends Local Battles Tournament held here at the Local Battles Arena in Fort Lee, New Jersey. We've got a really exciting set of threes coming up for you. Paleo Gaming lost to Rutgers University in the sec in the first set of the best of three for the double elimination tournament, which means we are now on to the finals, the best of three part two. Which is kind of exciting when you say it that way, but also just basically means, well, we're back to square one, guys. This time, no holds barred. Paleo Tundra Rutgers University coming into it as equals. Best first game uh, team to two games takes the series and the tournament. Yeah, this is going to be an interesting one, especially off the back of uh, that first best of series. It looked like uh, neither team could really get a handle on what the early game was, but when the mid game broke out, uh, Paleo just looked a little distraught when it came to getting the globals uh, with the teleport uh, in on time, getting the right fights, getting the coordination down in the fights, making sure everything was okay uh, with their ultimates. Uh, Rutgers just looked like they have a better team fighting since, and that's what's won them the games uh, two times now. Yeah, they've definitely had a pretty good uh, strength in the macro play, picking up Yeah, Rek'Sai was not in the last game. Rek'Sai is still the queen of the jungle right now. Uh, and Gragas being pretty much the only answer to Rek'Sai. Uh, this time, though, uh, the last game we had the bands that were targeting the jungle. This time, they're just going to give them away. They're going to say, we can use this beautiful Korean. Plays a damn good Gragas. Uh, Fatawan, I mean, it's Rek'Sai, so you can't really go wrong with that champion. Uh, so everything pretty even on the table. And looks like this time they're choosing to maybe sort of fix a little bit of the problems they had with the gym comp. Didn't have a lot of front line in the mid game before he could start killing people, but that they saw that now. Alistair and Gragas picked up for Rutgers University to form that front line. Four strong dogs, Jin. And in the meantime, Nami and Victor picked up here for Paleo Gaming. Now. The thing about Victor specifically is uh, he is a good control mage. He's got solid damage. He's got the AoE. He just isn't exactly... Uh, his damage isn't fast enough, if that makes any sense. His his gravity field uh, has a little bit of a delay on it. So if you can get someone like Alistair or someone like Gragas uh, into the back line, who, who instantly just can do that uh, with a flash body slam, a flash pulverize... Uh, the the zoning that victor offers isn't going to mean much but uh we will see how that plays out very true that's going to be the lock-in here though for Rutgers university going to follow up with the riven once more in the top lane for new killer and the oriana for shrew in the mid lane haven't seen very much of that recently but it is something to pick maokai going to be the top laner for jun in the uh, against New Killer's Riven. We'll see how that one works out. But in the meantime, let's run it down one more time for Rutgers University on the blue side. New Killer on Riven in the top lane. Beautiful Korean on Gragas in the jungle. Shrew on Oriana in the mid. Strong Dog on Jin in the bot lane for the carry. And Apples on Alistair to support as well. For Paleo Gaming Tundra. Jun on Maokai in the top lane. Fatawan and Fianch on Rek'Sai in the jungle. Ivia on Victor in the mid lane, and then Rekery and Necrid on the Lucian and Nami bot lane. Once again, guys, thank you very much for joining us. This is the last set, we swear. We're coming in for the grand finals, the final showdown between these two teams, the best, best of three. If you like what you see and you want to help support them, use that coupon code Local Legend. Use it through Match Arena. It doesn't take a dime out of your pocket. And we'll see you guys in just a few minutes when we hit the rift.
Alright folks, welcome to the Rift for game number one of the last best of three here at the local Legends tournament. It's going to be Rutgers University against Paleo Gaming Tundra once more to determine once and for all who's going to be the winner of our particular tournament here at the local Battles Arena in Fort Lee, New Jersey. It's been a long day so far of this tournament. Uh, I'm just now, you know, tuning in to catch the tail end of it. And there's some pretty high level mechanical play on League of Legends, some nice macro play as well. Uh, we've been looking at the best of the best in this series so far in Rutgers. They look like they're just edging ahead ever so slightly in both games. Yeah, they're just picking a really good play with the macro, with the objective control. Field green. Oh, might be a little too deep, but does manage to walk right out of there. So far, what I've seen from Beautiful Korean is that he's looked smarter as far as his pathing goes. Now, pathing isn't just, oh, well, I'm going to go this way and I'm going to take this camp and this camp. It's very much based around what your team comp is, where your lanes are assigned, uh, who's in what lane versus who, uh, and knowing where the enemy jungler is. He just seems, uh, if I would say anything, he seems faster on the uptake as far as the first bloods go he looks like he's just there slightly earlier and fatawan so far in the last series uh was very much a reactive jungler whereas beautiful korean was proactive ball by a little bit there so trade not so great in his favor but things going very badly in the top lane right as of that particular moment but Maokai does have the Corrupting Potion gonna be able to heal that stuff up pretty easily okay there we go there's the trade there's the damage right there yeah well the thing about top lane uh, and Maokai in the ribbon matchup specifically is he's gonna be able to sustain uh, that's just Maokai's thing and with the uh, the amount of spells that ribbon puts out to dodge around and get maneuvered everywhere Maokai's passive is gonna stack up real nice and with Grasp of the Undying, he's going to be able to heal up a lot. So, sustain, not a big issue for this Maokai. Much of a problem as time goes along, but we'll see how it goes as time goes on throughout this lane. New Killer proven pretty, pretty strong at getting himself a lead and then crushing the opposition in that time. We'll see how it goes as time progresses. Because as of right now, He's already doubled his farm. Yeah, now he does have that wave that's pushed into his turret, so he's going to be able to catch up off of that. Um, as we see his farm count already going up, but this game, especially with Orianna in the mid lane versus a victor, is very control-based. Uh, the only real snowball that I see happening could be in the bot lane, just because Alistair can really take advantage of the fact that Nami is squishy if they want to in the earlier parts of the game. And look at this. Once again, beautiful Korean looking to set up his first play into that bot side. And with another Infernal Drake happening uh, for happening to spawn for the first Drake, that means that bottom is the place to be. Uh, so kind of curious to see Fatawan up top right now. Yeah, Strong Dong and Apples have in fact managed to get that lane pushing in their favor towards their turret that is going to push out and force Paleo to come to them. Ripe time there for a gank for Beautiful Korean if he does manage to get there on time with the lane management the way it is. He's looking to scout uh -oh. something out, but Fatawan's in the mid lane. Yep, doesn't quite manage to get out. Might have to blow the flash there. It goes across the wall, blows both summers to get out, but does manage to escape with his life. Going to have to back though in the meantime. And beautiful oh Korean God, seeing Fatawan. Lot of damage. There comes the deadly flourish, not quite enough. Beautiful Korean might gonna have there it is. The body slam coming back up again. Flash burn from Tower Friend. Gonna be able to get up the slow. One more body slam will pick it up if he can make it land. Boom, there it is. He and gets first it. blood for beautiful Korean. But he's got Ivy are coming up to kite him. Outpools is there to escort him out though. And that's gonna be a pretty easy take for him. Walks away first blood and refreshes the buff. As he takes the kill on Fatawan. Rex I, I mean, as as good as the trimmer sense is, if you can't see Gragas standing right next to you when he's standing still, he's got the drop on you. He sees you before you see him. All of a sudden it's a little bit too late. You gotta extend or expend everything, and you've already flashed. So uh 
Well, no, never mind. Okay, I'm, I'm looking at cooldown timers. Uh, you expend the flash, and it still doesn't matter. The Gragas has more mobility than you right off the bat. Can't do much. You're going to get slowed by the barrel. And with the fact that Strong Dog and uh, Alf Apples, excuse me, I misread his name. Uh, Apple. Apples were, were pushed up in the bottom lane. Uh, you've got an easy time getting that first blood. Yeah, pretty easy pickings there for, for with a pretty easy pick. But Battle One looking for a little bit of range, trying to get into the beautiful green jungle. He is a little bit lower, but does get the smite and the barrel. Picks it quite easily. More focus around this bottom side. Rex Eyes invading. There comes the deadly flourish. Going to get the snare down. The bubble lands onto Apples, though. Forces the disengage. And that's going to be quite simple right there. Nami is really good at denying damage early with the heal and applying damage at the same time in the earlier parts of the laning phase. Now, the longer this goes, the more useful Alistair will be and she'll take precedence over the Nami. But for right now, bullying purposes, oh, there uh, go to Nami. Flash comes out. Deadly Flourish not quite going to land on an Ekrid, but Beautiful Green is here in the back line. Might be able to, be able to pick that one up. And that's going to be not quite enough to land it. Deadly Flourish has been Are they going for this dive? Switch. Going for the dive potentially. Beautiful Green is posturing for it, but has very low. Does have to back away. And there's a teleport, though, coming in, though, from June. Teleport coming in from Noob Killer as well. They knock the explosive away with the explosive cast. Noob Killer is there to make sure the engages don't come through. But both teleports are burned from the top laners, and they both have to walk back. The long walk back to their respective lanes, knowing they accomplished not very much. Yeah, they got both flashes out from that bottom lane. Now they can set this freeze up, or with knowledge that they're recalling, they can push this into the turret, deny them a little bit of CS, and uh, get a get a nice advantage for themselves in uh -oh. bot lane. But Jin does decide to stay. Yeah, there goes New Killer gonna take a lot of damage. There comes the three man shockwave. 3k That's Elo Shockwave nice... coming out right there to toss the rest of the team back in. But oh, Strong oh, in a Jin's little bit of trouble. Jin's going to get a little caught here. Does have the four bolts. Going to get slowed down. Has the heal. Might. That's going to be it. Might not be able to flash that one. There's the slow on to Recre. The bubble's going to land. Korean turns around knowing maybe not so much worth the trouble. Yeah, the pick ward spots out uh, Shrew and Noob Killer. So they weren't exactly able to collapse on that. But uh, Lucian and Nami probably with the movement speed from Nami's spells would have been too far up to their turret for that to be a play, so they just get a free kill on Jin. Yeah, a little bit out of position there, Strongly gets caught out by that Tide Caller's Blessing, the slows and the auto attacks double frocking from the Light Slinger passive. Pretty good synergy right there. Akari going to pick himself up another kill in a retribution, one to one now at the eight minute mark, a 300 gold difference for Rutgers. Yeah, Rutgers just a little bit ahead, and this has been the story. They've always just had that 1k, that 2k gold lead, and it's never really meant much. And th the teams that they go against, they always have some sort of play that can look like, okay, maybe Rutgers is going too far aggressive and we can just turn it around on them. But Rutgers, every single game that I have seen them play today, they have been the ones causing the aggression at the start. They have been the ones making the play. And it's only because they overdive or they overcommit or they uh, maybe they commit wrong, maybe they miss a skill shot here and there that they're able to get something turned back around on them. They look so good when they're in the driver's seat. Yes, they do. That being said, farm alarm incoming. Rek'Sai going up to the top side of the jungle. Noob Killer going to clear out a nice little award. Come back up to the top lane. June and Ruthler meet again finally in this top lane after a little bit of dancing around the mid river. Yeah, so sad to see the Maokai. Now, it was responded to, his uh, teleport was, by Noob Killer, so he didn't really lose much in the top lane. Uh, as far as, there's not much of an advantage for the Maokai, but he didn't give the advantage to Riven as she followed him down on that teleport play. Uh, but he didn't gain anything. So, kind of sad for the Maokai, as he wants to impact the map, but if you're not able to... If the Riven can get the follow, if they can have, you know, Gragas there for the disengage, then this Maokai is going to have a tough time in the matchup if he can't get some sort of lead going. Yeah, it doesn't look too good for him in the top lane. Things are even, but that's not really what you want to be against a Riven who's pretty good at controlling the game, even from slightly uh, behind standpoint. That is a swing lane that goes very quick, bad, very quick. Here comes the curtain call for the soft initiation, though. First person goes through. They're going to land it on Necrid. Here comes the explosive cast. Going to knock it back. The pulverize and the shots go up. And Korean picks up the kill quite quickly. Traps go through. 
Unbreakable Will comes out, and Beautiful Korean is going to be able to shepherd his way out of there. Apple's going to blow the Unbreakable Will to scare off the Engage. So the, the thing that burns me most about uh, Nami in the Jin matchup is as soon as the Jin ultimate comes out, Nami can just pinpoint based on uh, the, the little indicator for the Jin ultimate where the Jin is. You see him in lane next to the minions. Just throw your ultimate out. Stop the shots from coming through. And we got to pause. Yep, Apple's going to pause the game. Not really sure why. Uh, going to see you in the chat log just a little bit, a little bit soon. A lot of lag coming through apparently. Okay, so as I was saying with the, the Nami, um, and as chat you can see, apparently has caught me for DDoSing. Uh, no, I'm joking. Um, Nami can just throw ultimate. Wow, rude. Can't, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, when you want a team to win. No, I'm, I'm only kidding, only kidding. But, um... <laughs> but Vegito puts a lot of stock in the underdog story, and so, in fact, so much stock he might go broke if he, uh... Doesn't if Paleo doesn't win this one? Hey man, we were talking about bets in the Twitch chat earlier. I don't want to, I want to call any names, but I owe people money. No, I'm joking. <laughs> um, oh god. Uh no. So Nami doesn't waste the bubble. She doesn't even waste the flash. She just dies for free, basically. Uh, which is curious to me. Um, but I think after the first slow was uh, applied by the Jin Ultimate. Uh, the it would have to have been a perfectly placed Nami ultimate for there to be any kind of disruption, maybe make her get away. I don't think she thought it was worth it, so she just dies for free. Well, maybe not so comfortable in trying to pinpoint that immediately. In the meantime, though, Pale Nick Red does fall while we are trying to fix this lag. Uh, we're gonna just sit here in the pause, spin our tires, and kick it back while we wait for this pause to be resolved. In the meantime, though, let's take a quick recap of the game as it comes around. Gonna be 2 to 1 in the kills at the 10 minute and 40, sec uh, 40 second mark. About a, th about a 900 goal lead right now. Yeah, that's gonna be all on the junglers. Like, Gragas has both of the kills. Beautiful Korean is stacked right now. I say stacked. But he's a, he's a thousand gold ahead of Fatawan right now, and the only reason that there's an offset as far as the global gold is because Rickery has that kill onto the gym. Oh, there goes Shrew. A lot of damage coming through. Manages to get away with the shield. Gentleman's agreement there in the pause. Apparently, a lot of it affecting those top laners. Choose to back away after they found themselves on the opposite sides of the lane uh, from home uh, on e against each other. I forgot what they were trading for. They say, hey, man, you know, it's a it's a holiday. We can be friends for a day. It's all good. All good indeed. Meanwhile, Shrew forced to back away, has to blow the Flash and the Ghost again. But in the meantime, does have the ultimate up. Shockwave is available for the next fight, which means this is going to be huge. Oh, once again, the Jin bug is back. We can't see his cooldowns. God damn it. Jin, what did you do? What did you do? Uh, so they know. Presumably counted oh. to four. Uh, you know, that's probably a very common thing with Jin. Uh, so you learn to expect it. At this point, that means you learn to expect the spectator bug with his ultimate. Hey, there you go. Look, oh, there, oh, the flash, nice flash comes out from Ibier, and that's going to put him squarely behind the tower. But that is a flash blow in exchange only for the exploding class. Another minute or two until that one's going to be up for grabs. Oh, here comes the potential burst. Sure, you're gonna take a chunk of damage, but looks like Ibiar doesn't choose not to go all in on that with the Chaos Storm. Yeah, Command Protect, reducing a lot of the damage from that extra empowered auto attack from Power Transfer. Uh, so Oriana's just gonna walk away. And I mean, with Victor's Flash being down, you kind of don't want to commit to that. Uh, Rek'Sai is not gonna be able to follow up as fast as the Gragas is, who's literally right there next to the Victor. So uh, you kind of want to back off, you just threaten, show your teeth a little bit. Yeah, definitely not something we want to do when you're not sure where everyone else is on the map. In the meantime, though, we've got some pretty big item pressures coming out here. Ribbon going to finish that Black Cleaver in the top lane. Malachi is still working on the Sunfire Cape. Has the Bomby Cinder, though. Did stop, though, for the Dark Seal to make that Corrupting Potion even better. Yeah, Dark Seal... So great. This has been the trend. As soon as Dark Seal came out, 
all of a sudden, uh, pre people have been using that item for sustain more than the, the snowball potential that it has. As soon as you get a few kills, okay, it's nice, nice bonus. But you really just get it for the extra healing and uh, regen from those potions and the corrupting potion. Oh, here comes Rand Dog Gank, though. Tidal Wave coming right down. Going to tag him in the back line there. Apples is going to get bubbled up, but there's not quite enough just yet to take them down. Both of the bot laners of Rutgers managed to get away. But the gank on the Veers one more time, and Shrew's going to pick up the kill. Shockwave and Command Attack going to pick that one up pretty easily. Oh, well. We, uh, we saw the Shockwave miss there, but uh, it doesn't matter. The Gragas has already front-loaded the burst damage on that one. Speaking oh, of front-loading the burst yeah, damage. Yeah, wow. Speaking of front-loaded, Strong Dog now in a little bit of trouble. Rekkery is going to be a little close to dead. Shots go away and not quite going to land it, but Rekkery forced to back away. Strong Dog a little bit too close for comfort there in the curtain call. Uh, didn't expect to see the curtain right up in his face. Yeah, um... If that bubble would have landed, now they did waste heal on that. They did throw the heal out for the gen. If bubble would have landed, that probably could have been a kill for the Lucian, but he was taking so much tower aggro that he uh -oh. had to back off. Beautiful Korean comes in. That's going to be a lot of stuff coming on to Jun, though. He's forced to flash away. There's a flash stun coming in. Maybe not a little bit of communication there, but the Blade of the Exile, the Wind Slash coming through, and that's going to be a kill picked up for the top lane. And now three people are here. Going to push this top lane tower into the ground. Yeah, they get the play. They get the roam up from the Orianna, and Rek'Sai is there, but the mid laner is not. Victor's really late on that uh, roam up. All of a sudden, they they get the kill. They back off. They say, "All right, we'll uh, we'll save the turret for another day." Victor's here. We gotta we gotta head out, boys. Yeah, or uh, slightly more sadistically, keep Jun coming. I like eating his face. Yeah, just wait for your ultimate to come back up, dive him again, you know, keep killing him. Or, hey, you've got teleport up. Once that uh, Blade of the Exile is up, you can quite possibly get something rolling down onto this bot lane, pick up that Infernal Drake, and have, yet again, superior dragon control like you have been uh, in the past series. Oh, that's going to be a pink ward down. Uh, pink ward number two for apples, I guess, just to take down that ward. There, here it is. Gonna be able to pick that one up. Deadly Flourish comes through, and Rekri now gonna take a chunk of damage. Here comes the wave, though, and the calling comes through. Not quite enough, but Necra taking a chunk of damage. Fourth shot goes a little wide, but Shrew's gonna be there as well. Peaceful Korean gonna shepherd him out of that one, but they're stuck kind of on the wrong side of the enemy team. So the cast has to come through, Shrew has to flash away, and now the teleports come running in. Shockwave oh, lands shockwave. onto two, but there's nobody there to pello that one up. Riven got the teleport down, so they just said, all right, now we got to disengage. Now we really can't chase them. Uh, it's not worth it anymore. Riven just walks back up to top lane. Everything goes back to the way it was. Nothing important other than ultimates blown on either side, uh, with the exception of Shrew having to burn that flash and the ghost. Yeah, definitely not the greatest outcome, but Korean now here in the bot lane once again going for the gank. Did pass off for Ward and stopped to clear, but knows that they know uh, he's there. But now, roaming up towards the top lane, coming towards the Infernal Drake. Uh, not really sure what the play for that one is going to be just yet. Yeah, we have yet to see both top laners uh, impact the map really in any big way. Um, New Killer gets the kill up top, that's why he's 1 0 0. But um, neither top laner has teleport. There's no real play uh, that Fadawan can get in to try and steal that Infernal. So that's just going to be more fighting power for Rutgers. Yeah, in the meantime, coming up very closely on the 20 minute mark. We've got up. Oh, Flash comes out though from Necker. And the Pulverize comes in. Rekkery left for dead. Strong Long going to pick up that kill quite nicely for himself. Oh uh, well, he's still oh, dead. Oh, okay. Well, he went back in for the trade. He he, uh, and he didn't even flash. He just got killed by command shot or a command attack, command dissonance combo. Well, I guess that works. And there, there comes the deadly flourish. Boink, boink. Korean picks up a killing spree on the Nami, 
And three kills for uh, zero later, and uh, Rutgers just goes, we will we will take all of that. Thank you very much. We will, we will take all of that. I don't know. That does not work as a song. It doesn't. I tried. You tried. It was, it was a valiant attempt. But with that, they do secure the first blood turret gold for the extra 400 as well. And that's going to be right now cementing them at a five, almost 6,000 gold lead here at the 20, almost coming up to the 19 minute mark. Speaking of Valiant attempts, let's talk about uh, Paleo's early game right now. Uh, they look like they want to make the plays, they want to collapse, and they want to get everything done. Like they have in the past two games of the last series. They didn't... There was no uh, supreme leader when it came to who's pressuring what, who's doing what. It was very even in that sense, but now they just look sort of distraught. Uh, like they're not able to keep up with Rutgers onslaught in the early game of both of these series. Yep, looks like Korean, they were gonna find Fadawan Fanch in the bush. Nothing happening right so far. Everyone's kind of converting over there. There goes the pulverize though. Barrel's gonna come out and Oriana not quite gonna be able to get the kill, but there comes the curtain call. One shot, two not gonna land, three gonna land on the floor. There's four not quite gonna hit it. She's but there's the Noob Killer with the stun. Not quite enough, and there's Shrews on a rampage with the command dissonance. Man, that that ribbon just got in there with the flash, and she's looking to dive the turrets. Not holding. Yeah, it's gonna come right through. Noob Killer gonna be able to pick that one up. Flash body slam coming through. Have your flashes through the other way, but Noob Killer's gonna pick it up, and that's a 4 4 0 in favor of Rutgers University. Rutgers just look like they're running away with it. Push it down mid, just uh, run it down there. You know, everything should be A-OK. -okay. These guys don't have the outplay for us because we're five strong. Our Orianna still has Shockwave. Like, our Alistair still has his ult. There's not really anything that they can do off the back of that even after they respawn. And they're going to take Tier 2 mid and really blow this game wide open. Yep, take the Tier 2 mid, move up as well to the Tier t uh, 1 top lane turret. Looks like Paleo are a little bit on the back foot on this one, not able to react quite in time. Looks like even Rekkery going down to that bot lane to clear that wave. Content on giving up that turret. It is a little low after all. Yeah, they already had the pressure on it. Uh, keeping it low in this matchup is very easy for Riven because uh, Maokai has pretty much no pressure on her. And out. Oh my god. Strong Dong with the Deadly Flurge to pick up the last bit of damage. Beetle Green almost 100 to zeroing. Oh my goodness. Necrid right there. But that's a final one. going to take a lot of damage. Here it comes right through, though. He's got an Abyssal Scepter on top of that. Runic Echoes, and it's going to be a time damage going through. June has picked up Noob Killer, but the Shockwaves comes through and the three k double kill for Oriana right through. That's going to be another 4-4-1 four, four, in favor of Rutgers, and they are just picking up people left, right, and center. If you're not there, you don't die. That's the rule. So I'm going to tell you another rule. It's uh, you pick Alistair into any kind of uh, support that is squishy, like the Nami, and you can completely destroy her when it comes to anything that's past about level four. You go in, you headbutt pulverize, or you just headbutt her against the wall, you get pulverizer after that, you get the superior lockdown. Nami only has the bubble. She has tidal wave, but you're Alistair. You don't care. You just go in and you knock people up anyway. You are the superior support when it comes to engaging. And this is exactly how they're playing it out. They're making that look very apparent. Is it bad that my first thought was, well, you can't go ham with Alistair because he's a cow? I tell you what, Rutgers look like they have some beef. Oh my god. All right, folks, that's how you know it's late night. Casters are making food jokes 22 minutes into the game here, but let's move along in that time. Shrew going to pick up the blue buff for himself there as Rutgers posture around the Baron Vision Dragon up in a minute as well. I got another one for you. Oh boy. You ready? Is, yeah, I'm ready. I'm noob going. Killer? Noob Killer looks like he wants some sushi because he's got the Blade of the Exile cutting that Nami up. Uh, That was a little forced. Yeah. It was a stretch. That was a bit of a stretch. I can feel that though. Well, oh, said. Gonna steal away the blue here. Looks like Paleo don't even want to try and contest that one. Uh, I think Shrew got blue buff part <laughs> Shrew got second to blue buff. That's what that is. It's like second breakfast, except for mana and all the time in your enemy's jungle, apparently. Yeah, second buff. Uh, that's a meal I think everyone wants. So let me let me just uh, 
Let me just enjoy that real quick. I am Oriana. My mana costs are pretty high uh, due to nerfs and whatnot. So having a double blue buff and keeping the snowball going as if 6, 0, oh, and 3 already wasn't good enough. <laughs> I need to have a blue buff. Really nice. Then I need to have another blue buff for the time it's taking me to run. Oh my god. Good lord. 100 to 0. That was actually 100 to 0. I am like... And here I am pretty sure that those things don't stack, and I looked at it and I went, now I have no idea, because that was deleted from the map right now. Sure though, doesn't have anything else to open up. Here comes the curtain call to open up the fight once more. Lots of damage coming through, fourth shot. Not gonna be landing on anybody squishy, but it's still a ton of damage. Jun taking about a two thirds of his health just from the fourth bullet. Meanwhile, strong damage, strong dong, strong dog, and beautiful Korean taking down that bottom lane turret with relative ease. It feels like Ruck Rutgers, uh, they had all of their computers and they all simultaneously created a, a new folder, a new document that said uh, Paleo Tundra, and they just put it in the recycle bin all at the same time. That's what this game feels like. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, man. We're like, we're like tired, bad freak right now, dude. Like, this is not great. How can you be bad freak? Freak's already bad. I mean, if you're you bad freak. Bad, you make worse puns than freak. I think at that point uh, it's time to go to bed. I think I did. I honestly deserve an award if I can do that. <laughs> oh, man. All right. But that being said, Rutgers is firmly in the driver's seat right now. New killer going to casually run away from Rek'Sai. And, oh, okay. Mastery spam. Nice, nice. Does she know she's in the lead? She's like, all right, send two up here. I don't care. I'll take everything on the other side of the map. And then she remembers, oh wait, my team's not in position to do that. So nothing gets taken. Yes, but once again, Rutgers, the story of this team, objective control, objective control, objective. Oh, there's a deadly flourish out of that one. Jun has to prop the sap magic and the we are, oh my Lord. What is that even called? I don't remember, but the thing that reduces damage, there's a lot of damage coming across across. The wave catches three, but it's not enough to save anybody. Yeah, curtain call comes out one more time. Padawan's gonna have to tank that one, and Maokai's gonna pick up the last shot, and here comes Jin waiting for it. It's gonna land on the second shot as well. That's gonna be another inhibitor down for Paleo Gaming. Rutgers try to take this tower one more, and they'll have two inhibitors off the back of this push. There's one, there's two. Rutgers University walk away, leaving the base in shambles. Paleo Gaming stuck inside their home base, trying to get out, trying to make something happen, but they can't do it off the back of those double inhibitors, but they have to contest the Baron because Rutgers is going there right now. Yeah, the super minions haven't started pushing into their base just yet, and I don't think they, the mid lane ones actually even spawn until next wave, so they've got a little lease on life to maybe try and get this Baron still, but this is a 14,000 gold lead at 26 minutes. This is completely... Uh, I don't want to say impossible, but unheard of to come back from a, a gold deficit this big. Yeah, it's definitely very hard. Yeah, we've seen we've seen bigger comebacks, right? We've seen the twenty thousand gold down. All three of your inhibitors are down, but that's at like sixty minutes into the game where gold doesn't matter because everyone has six items. Where nothing really matters like a, a baron buff doesn't really add much more other than push power but at that point your 80 carry can kill the minions anyway i mean this is 26 minutes into the game they're they're sitting on one and a half to two items depending on who has what kind of gold versus anywhere from three three to four i think this ribbon's almost completed that ravenous hydra at this point yeah, it's definitely not pretty for Paleo. They are going to have to make some pretty drastic and some really tricky plays to get themselves back into the game as of the moment because right now they stand behind about a 14,000 gold here at the 27-minute mark, and it's not looking like it's showing any signs of stopping. Shrew in the mid lane alone has a 4,000 gold lead on this victor. This is, uh, I mean, she's sitting on 1,200 gold. Like, this Oriana is... We saw it earlier. She can delete anyone that she chooses that isn't named Jun on this enemy team. Uh, I don't think she can delete. I don't think she can one-shot Rek'Sai, but it's getting close. Yeah, it's it's it, it. One combo, definitely more than half health on the Rek'Sai. Definitely. It's it's a close call. I'd be willing to take bets, chap. 
Who you who you got? You got Oriana. Well, or you got Rexai. I'm I will bet on I will bet on uh, Fatavon being able to survive a one shot. But I don't know about that one because Shroom might not get the chance to do anything in this fight. Chaos Storm taken down. But Jun is in the back line. Fatawan is going to be there in the corner. There it is. There's the shockwave. Yep, can't one shot her. I was right. I don't know what you owe me, but there is the gunshots to kill off the coals. Curtain call is going to fire off the rest of it. Here comes one more barrel. And that's going to be not great for everybody. Strong Dog going to walk in through the base. They're going to try and end the game right here. Nexus Tower number one is going to fall. Nexus Tower number two is going to fall. Deadly Flourish lands onto Recreate. He's taking a ton of damage. Going to fall as well. And that's going to be the Nexus. Game one of the series goes to Rutgers University. We thought this entire time that Noob Killer would be the one to carry. All of a sudden, this Oriana ends up 9-0 and 5. Beautiful Korean is doing everything that he can for his lanes, and he is by far the superior jungler of the entire tournament. Definitely true, but that being said, we're going to be right back with the second game. Game two of the series coming up in just a few moments.